Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. I now present Honorable Wayne Girard, Minister in the Ministry of Finance and MP for Ancillary. Good morning, good morning, members of the press. Good to see you again. I'm, I'm beginning to get comfortable. That's good. Yeah? yeah, so this morning I thought it is only appropriate that we update you on the work that took place um, on the Ancillary Bridge. As you would have noticed, there was a demolition of some of the houses um, in order to create the bypass uh, for the construction of the new bridge. So that went on very, very smoothly. Um, we took some time to get to that point because we wanted to make sure that we relocated the affected residents properly. It wasn't simply of us just throwing them out in the street. So we made sure that there was relocation in place before we went ahead and, and did that. Um, I would like to also update you on the installation of the sewer treatment system. Um, you may have heard um, that there was some uh, possibility that one existed. But I think on Friday last week, um, some members of the media did visit Ancillary and they are still apparently looking for the sewer treatment system. Um, I would like to remind my constituents that it's only uh, last week that the Prime Minister approved the million dollars to put in the sewer treatment system. So at the moment, it doesn't exist. And what I said previously with regards to the sewer going into the sea was, was the intent. And if it was not the intent, then somebody needs to explain why it is it wasn't in place before the construction of the facility. I think it's also appropriate that I address you on the upcoming budget dates. Um, on the 26th of March at 10 a.m., the Prime Minister will lay the estimates of revenue and expenditure. And at 3 p.m. will be the Standing Finance Committee. On the 23rd of April, um, at 10 a.m., the Prime Minister also will lay the appropriation bill. This year, our priority, the Prime Minister has indicated, would be infrastructure. And when we say infrastructure, it does simply mean roads. I mean, the Prime Minister made the point to indicate that schools are involved, the airport is involved, the port is involved. Um, so not simply uh, a matter of, of roads. We, it's a responsibility that the Prime Minister takes very seriously. We inherited a situation, to be quite frankly, where the, the, the road network was in a mess. And we've tried our very best to make sure that we keep up with the, um, the, the deterioration. Um, but as you would have well recognized when we came into government, which is a very significant point, the debt to GDP ratio was 101%. As of December 2021, pain in mind we got into government of July 2021, as of the check that was done by the, the World Bank and the IMF as of December 2021, our debt to GDP ratio was 101%. So I think the Prime Minister has done a very, a very sterling job to get us to where we are at the moment, and I have every confidence he will encourage us and will support us in delivering um, for the commitments that we made to the people of San Rosha. Um, thank you very much. Any, any questions? I will happily take them. Just one quick question. <coughs> yes? With the demolition of, regarding the, the bridge. Mm -hmm. Yes, we expect to have a two-lane bridge. Um, at the moment, as you know, it's a, it's a one-lane bridge. Um, so the intent is to have a two-lane bridge. Um, with, um, so what you see built at the moment is the bypass. So we create the bypass, then we remove the existing bridge, and we install a much, a much more appropriate bridge for the community of, of Ansari. The days of Ansari being seen as the backward community, the community with no ambition, the community that always seem to be interested in is, is, is other things interested in other people, but we seem to get the brunt of the focus of what we've not been able to achieve. And going forward, you see a remarkable difference in Ansari Canaries. We, I'm from Ansari Canaries, I'm from Jackmel, um, and I take personal uh, pleasure in ensuring that I deliver on those commitments. It will be a new constituency at the time of the next general election. I read an article that spoke about a $40 million investment from the World Bank mm -hmm. for fiscal and green reforms. Yes. Are you able to comment on that? What it does it entail and what is it for? So we, and it is something that we inherited, to be quite honest. There was, um, and the former Minister of Finance never admitted it. St. Lucia uh, was born as if there was no tomorrow. So we needed to get some assistance. They needed to get some assistance to be able to finance the expenditure that they were essentially encouraging. So it is something that we did simply to ensure that there was no break in continuity because we did inherit a very difficult situation. As I was saying, 101% of debt to GDP is a significant figure. 
Um, of the countries in the region and the world, I think St. Lucia would have borrowed two and a half times more than any other country. Countries borrowed during COVID, but in our particular case, we borrowed two and a half times more than any other country in, in, in the world, and certainly in the Caribbean. So the 40 million is simply to assist us with budgetary support, which was uh, an inherited program that we went through. We did have to do some, some refining and some better work in terms of targeting what the money will be used for, but it was something that was existing when we came into government. Yeah. Um, so we like to continue things. We're not in the business of, of, of destroying or, or stopping and starting. We're in the business of continuity because the people of St. Lucia, at the end of all, is who we serve and who we had to serve. Yes? How long is the Ancestry Bridge expected to take? So we are anticipating all things being equal. I'm told nine months. So we should have this uh, um, contracted and in place in nine months then. But in the interim, you'll get periodic updates as to where we are. Um, because as you know, Rainfall, heavy rainfall would have some um, challenges in terms of how we proceed, but we're told nine months to completion. What, are you, what did you do to address crime and youth given in Jack Mill? Now, when you say Jack Mill, we need to be careful. It's not actually Jack Mill. So I, I know the general generalization is to say it's Jack Mill, but the issues, the, the, the challenges that exist is a little further north of Jack Mill in the constituency of Baden. It is something that we are keeping a very close eye on. As you would have noticed over the last few weeks, there have been nothing um, happening there. As a matter of fact, last night, whilst I was in Jack Mill, the SSU was, was making its regular rounds. So we recognize the challenges that exist there, and we're trying our best to ensure that we're not a community known simply for all things negative, including crime. We, we, are, we have a lot more to provide to the country and to showcase ourselves than, than just that. Um, I know you wouldn't be able to give more yes. details on these things, but you know, it's a very uh, concerning matter. Mm -hmm. Young people, I mean, this was rural castles, mm -hmm. but do you think that it's outside influence, I mean, not just the kids from the area, but mm -hmm. outside influence in bringing it into this crime? Uh, I think partly. I think, I think also we have a system where um, residents go overseas from a particular community. Um, they find themselves in trouble overseas. They get they get trained in the in the things that are not lawful, and then when they are deported, they come back to the country and create a problem. So there there is an element of of, of outside influence, but I think we all need to just redouble our efforts to do what we can to mitigate that outside influence. When I grew up in Jack Mill, um, if I ever saw a fight, it would be very rare and very short lived because the community would separate. In this particular instance, you find everybody is paying a blind eye and saying it's not their business until it gets to their doorstep. And there's one thing we know for a fact. It may not get to you today, but at some point, if we don't arrest the situation, it will get to your doorstep. And that is why the Prime Minister did the two and a half security levy. It is not simply because we are happy with the, the minor benefits we're getting. We wanted to enhance our, our police force, give them access to more equipment, more technology, and that is one of the reasons, the principal reasons for the two and a half levy, because we know we could always do better, and we want to do better. I mean, nobody wants to live in a society where they have to worry about when they leave their home, when they come back, whether the furniture will be there, can they go out and have a decent lime. On the 26th of January, and I will come back to you to announce that officially, we're relaunching our fish fry and ancillary. I would like it to be a very safe environment. Um, I, I would like all of you to come spend your money um, in the community. And I don't want you to feel harassed or, or threatened. It's in our interest to ensure that we have and maintain a very safe community and country. Good afternoon. Wow, well, it's that time of day. The year is flying. All right. Um, I just want to, before I open for your questions, I just want to tell you that I've always taken a pledge to speak the truth to, to the people of St. Lucia, even though the truth is very uncomfortable. I know it's, it is very uncomfortable for the UDIP to understand that they destroyed a, a, a holding facility without making adequate preparation, preparations or adequate arrangements for housing people who were arrested. I know it's very uncomfortable for them to admit that was, that was irresponsible. And um, having destroyed that facility and not creating any viable arrangement to detain arrested people 
people arrested on suspicion, people arrested to be, to be charged in the future, and haven't been so short-sighted as to destroy that facility. Considering the fact that we are rebuilding that uh, uh, facility, I expect the United Workers Party to be very ashamed. But truth is, there was absolutely no place, there was no holding facility in Castries for the detention of arrested people. And the police force, apart from, and I want to commend them and thank them for having to find places to detain arrested people. Rosalie, Babono, Marsha, Marigo, Ansari, sometimes as far as Sufre. When these cells were full, there was no place to put these people. This is an uncomfortable truth, the responsibility of the United Workers Party, which they are ashamed to admit. And fact is, very uncomfortable, some of these people who were arrested had to be released because there was physically no place to put them because the United Workers Party destroyed the custody suite. So I know it's very uncomfortable, but that, that is a fact. And I want to thank the police for having to deal with that inconvenience. It caused an increase in the use of our resources. Police vehicles had to be used to transport detained people, and it caused quite an issue with our national security. That situation has been rectified with the construction of the custody suites. But it was highly responsible and an act of callousness on the part of the United Nations Party to destroy the custody suites. We are rebuilding the custody suites, among other things that we are doing for the police, among other things. We are doing many other things in terms of the physical, the physical existence for the police. Work on, I want to invite you to have a tour sometime on work on the Grosily, the, the northern headquarters for the police is situated in Grosily. I want to invite you to have a tour, a tour of that at some point. Again, an act of irresponsibility. That was supposed to be built from 2016. That was supposed to be built, not built. Irresponsibility. Then, the Viewfort police station, that there was a mold infestation in that, in that police station from since 2020. Let's say 2019 was COVID. Again, no work done there. We're the one who started to do work on that facility. You, you, you understand? There's several other police uh, uh, facilities. No work was done. We're going to be repairing them. We're going to be renovating them to ensure that the police have a better environment to work on. On Baudelaire, the situation which inherited as far as Baudelaire is concerned, you understand? We have to, you have to have discussions to find out what was the situation in Baudelaire in 2021. When we, won, when we won elections. So the, the national security situation is a situation that has many, many, many facets. What work happened at Baudelaire? What was the condition of Baudelaire when we took government in 2021? These are the things we have to consider. So again, I want also to note that the homicides in this country, I'm very, very concerned about it. But fact is, for the latter part, the last half of 2023, the percentage in homicide rates decreased substantially when compared to the first half. No comfort. I take no comfort for that. I'm stating a statistical fact that in the second half of 2023, the homicide rate decreased when compared to the first half. The measures that we put in place, these measures are going to be strengthened this year. Hopefully, we can continue that downward trend that was seen 
in the second half of 2023. But it's not good enough. It ought to be better. But I want to thank the police for, for the efforts. I want to thank all the NGOs for the efforts. But we are hoping that we can continue. <coughs> Sorry, we can continue that trend in 2024. But the last, the, the second half of 2023, there was, if you look at it, there was a substantial decrease in the number of homicides. But not good enough. Nothing to boast about. These are the facts. I also want to congratulate Ms. Nina Compton daughter of the late Prime Minister Sir John Compton and Lady Janice. She of a, a, a luxury vessel in the Royal Caribbean fleet. The vessel is called Silver Nova was named after her. She is in she is the, the, the godmother of, of, of that vessel. And then it was it, it, it's it's one of the latest vessels in the Royal a Caribbean fleet. It, it, it's a luxury vessel, and that happened on January the, the 4th in, in Miami, in Florida. And then she was hailed as um, Nina Compton for human connection, cultural discovery, and honoring tradition. And it reads, born in St. Lucia, a resident of New Orleans, and trained at the, at the Clooney Institute of America, Nina Compton is an award-winning chef, restauranteur, and TV personality. Her values of human connection, cultural discovery, and the honoring of heritage, tradition, and identity align with those of Silver Seas, Salt, Silver Seas program. The owner of two restaurants in New Orleans, Nina Compton is a leading practitioner and passionate advocate for the food of the Caribbean and was named a culinary ambassador for home country of St. Lucia, where her father served as the nation's first prime minister. So I want to congratulate Miss Compton and I want to congratulate Lady Janice and the rest of the family for this singular honor that was bestowed on Miss Compton. Press. Yes. Questions. Yes. And that's why the custody switch should not be destroyed. Yes. Um, in terms of the city police, I know they, uh, they complement the, the, the RSLP, but there has been some concerns that there is not someone in charge. That well, as the you know, the again, the city, the city police was not a construct of my government. We found it. I have asked the Minister of, of Local Government to have a, a professional assessment of city police, which is happening now. So as soon as that assessment is done, we will come with a, 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 we'll be able to tell you what we found. You see, I, I, I not want to speak without evidence. You see, so the assessment is being done by a professional. When assessment is done, we'll have a conversation with the city police. <coughs> Yes, the, 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 commissioner, the commissioner has made a plea for the reestablishment of, of the K-9 unit. Um, we had some operations, the police had some operations late last year that involved using the, the, the K-9 unit. Um, we actively involved in these discussions. Um, but I, as I said, I mean, this is, is it's not as simple. You need trainers, you need this. It's not a, I mean, it may sound like very simple, K-9 unit, but it has, it has very many things, surprisingly. Many things you have to go through to get a K-9 unit going. But we are working on it, and we'll make an announcement as to when and if we're going to have a K-9 unit in St. Lucia. But we, are, we continue to seek use of, of, of dogs from our friendly neighbors, the French, the Americans, assist us. 
expense when necessary for the use of dogs, but we are considering actively a canine unit. You said you have to train officers. Um, wasn't there one canine unit before? Yes, yes, there was, but you know, as most things, you know, and you know, I always tell you, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not in a position to make any, to opine on police operations. And I insist in that position. I'm not, I can't opine on police operations. I'm not a police officer. My father was, not one. So in terms of the training that is necessary, I have to go strictly on the advice of the police professionals, commissioner and the staff. What I know is the, commis the commissioner has asked for a, a K-9 unit. We're going to have these discussions, and I will tell her the resources that are available if they become available, and for the details on training and the logistics, that will be up to her. That's her job. She is the commissioner of police. She is the one, she is a professional who has the responsibility for ensuring that law enforcement happens. My job is to create the policy, to create the advice, and to make the resources available. And this is why we've been using the health and security levy to make these resources available to the police. Well, I'm sure that you know now the dates for our budget presentation and the dates for our estimates presentation during these presentations, particularly the policy statement, you will hear the resources that we have made available to the police, the resources, and we intend to increase that. Before the end of this year, we're going to have another batch of police recruits before the end of this year. Training is happening, the training will start shortly. Right now, the recruitment process is on the way. That's going to happen. So I'm, I'm going to show you, we had the RSS in St. Lucia fighting three of three tours of duty. The money, that, that, costs, that costs money. These things, the health and security levy helped in that regard. So we're going to be outlining all the things that we did the work at Baudelaire. Baudelaire is part of the security apparatus. The work at Baudelaire was done. All that work, the health and security levy is used to fund all these things. Yes. Yeah. Um, in regards to statements for the 2023 police report that was made, um, Andrew Dikarish responded in regards to the large amount of cannabis that was saying that, that right now he believes that the, the police are basically wasting their resources because they focus so much on cannabis, whereas there are other things such as cocaine and that have little amounts of confiscation throughout 2023. Do you have a, any comment? Uh, yeah, I know in terms of cannabis, in terms of cannabis, I know that the minister is preparing a policy, a, a complete policy, um, to strengthen what exists. As you know, it is our government that decriminalize the use of small quantities of cannabis. It is our government that said that if you get arrested and you have, you have a record, you expunge from the records. It's our government that did that. It's our, our, our government who is looking into, in, looking into the use. Some work was started by the last government, but our government is continuing that, that, that work and enforcing it and strengthening it, the work to, to, to the, the eventual decision as whether well, cannabis is going to be legalized or not. Right now, cannabis is not legalized. What's legalized is small quantities for personal use and for the planting of four trees per household. This is what's legalized. This is the law. We're looking into that law. It's been looked into, but again, that's the function of law enforcement. I will not if that is the opinion of Mr. Uh, 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 Dicares, I can take, I can't, I can't fault him for his opinion. But the fact is, the trafficking of cannabis is still an offence, and that's reality. That the the police face. That's reality. So until these laws are changed, and I can tell you, we are actively looking at, at these laws, actively pursuing these laws. The minister has formed her commission. And these, these have been looked into, and I'm sure, very shortly, 
we'll have a statement so then the, the police now would know what is trafficking and what is personal use. But right now, they've defined what is personal use and what is trafficking. So, law is, so Mr. DeCarri's opinion is well understood coming from his point of view. I have mentioned that to, to, to the police commissioner, and she's assured me that if there are any deficiencies in this regard, she's going to make sure that happens. Um, so, um, just going back to something you mentioned, the, in the Department of Justice, they have changed the changing of the disorder allowing for 30 grams of cannabis for personal possession. Um, it, it was mentioned that um, those who had a record for these small amounts would have been expected to. Can you give us an update as to how many people would have been I can find that out for you. I can find out for you. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'll ask my people to find out for you. I'm fine for you, yeah. Because again, that doesn't come to me. That goes through the process. You see, our government is a government of processes. You know, and, and this is what, you know, we, and it's difficult to understand processes, you understand? Because what, you, you, what we've been used in St. Lucia is one man is an engineer, he's a doctor, he's a quality surveyor, he's a, he's a mechanic, he's a hospital administrator, he's everything, one man. And that's, and that's a problem, you understand? And this is why we find ourselves in the situation that we find ourselves. Because we do not allow professionals to do their work. Of course we have issues, but professionals must be accountable. So what has happened is that politicians have tried their best to pretend that they have the answers to all the, the, the questions in, 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 in St. Lucia. In, in St. Lucia. They're not. So our government is a government of processes. This year, we are going to be calling for an increase in the implementation rates. So the people responsible, directly, because you know, the job, and, and this is why it's so difficult for some politicians to understand when they've, they, they have lost power. They haven't understood that this job is a job that's temporary. It's not, it's not a permanent job. You sit at the dictates of the people of the country. So you can't take it all for yourself. You've got to let processes continue. When I'm no longer the Minister of Finance, the Finance Ministry will continue. It's not mine. I'm just hoeing for somebody, you understand? And this is hard to understand. And this is why you have all that bitterness and all that, 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 all that, all that calumny. Because people haven't understood that their job was temporary. And I want to tell to all budding politicians, those in my government, those who want to see government, that being in government, especially as a politician, is a temporary phenomenon. When, you, when you're in your father's business, you can inherit that. But you don't inherit governments. Governments are not left for you because you believe that it, 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 it's your place. People elect you. And I've been very, very fortunate. People have elected me six times to represent them. I will thank them profusely for that. I will never not have gratitude for the people of Cassius East who've elected me six times. My single greatest achievement in life was to be elected six times by the people of Cassius East. But I know, and no one needs to remind me that the job of prime minister is temporary. It's a temporary job. And I think people should think of that. And if they think of that, then their thinking will be, will be more focused. They will understand it's for the good of the country and not for their own personal aggrandizement. It's not an I, it's not a me, me, me. It's a country. And this is what I try to do. I try to involve all my ministers. This morning, you heard the Honorable Wayne Girard, who is a minister in the Minister of Finance. He's, he's out there working on the budget with me, doing what he has to do, seeing about his constituency. We have to develop this thing holistically. It can't be a one-man show. And, this is the government, and I will not lead a one-man government. I have confidence in my cabinet. Each man and woman have their responsibilities which they have to follow. It's not a one-man show. In addition, I spoke to Mr. Gerard about this, but I also want to comment on it. Um, there, 
I read an article about the forty billion dollar investment from the World Bank. Um, no, it's not an investment. It's a, go ahead, sorry. I think it's a loan, well, a policy based you, loan, you can correct me, that's a fine. PBL loan. Yes. Uh, fiscal and, and reforms. Yes. Any sure, sure. It, it, it's a policy based loan from the World Bank to help. The, we we have two policy based loans. One from the World Bank and one from the, from the Caribbean Development Bank. These loans had some pre, pre, pre disbursement conditions which we had to, to do. We had some changes in, in legislation, which we've we, we, we done. We actually have done it, or in the process of, of finalizing it. These conditions were met, and the World Bank were, con were convinced that in the trajectory of our economy, and the work we had been we have been doing, we it was it was okay for us to get a policy based loan for forty million dollars. That loan is going to be used to do a few things. In fact, both of these loans, Caribbean Development, Caribbean Development Bank and the World Bank, these loans are going to be used to modernize the Inner Revenue uh, uh, Department to make it to modernize it to get it up to date with modern uh, 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 technology. Some of it is going to be used for land administrative, land administrative matters. Some of it is going to be used for budgetary support. And the, the remainder is going to be used for the, for the development, the growth, the development of, of St. Lucia's, St. Lucia's economy. So this is what two loans, policy-based loans, you hear more about it at the policy address. But he's correct. So we're very, we're very, we actually pass all the tests from the World Bank to get these loans. But from the, both the World Bank and the CDB, were satisfied that the economy of St. Lucia was being managed in a way that they could make these two loans available for us on the concessionary financing without, without direct interference in the reign of, of the economy. We met the conditions. That's what we had to do. According to our UN report, um, they expect food prices to be generally high in 2024. Yes, that's is, a concern. Is there anything that the government is doing to help out with that? Uh, is there anything the government can do to help out with that? And, and you know, I just, before I came here, I just heard that the, the uh, a US cargo ship was attacked in, in the waters by the by the U2, the, 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 the UT rivers, yes, in the Red Sea, you know, and you know issues in the Panama Canal, these issues. You know, what St. Lucia needs, and we had a discussion on inflation, and the comments from the opposition on, on inflation with on the cons consultation were childish, immature. I also heard a discourse on inflation, <laughs> which was, no, above, above the wrong thing, but I heard a discourse, a, a pronouncement on, the, on, on, on inflation. And you know, there was a comedian called Paul King Douglas. And that, that pronouncement was Typical to what a Paul King Douglas would would would, would say, <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, if it was the country we were running, that would be cause for amusement. But the country we are running, inflation last year was six and a half to ten percent. That was the range. Inflation. Before that, there was deflation after COVID. The highest level of inflation was 2.5%. Most of the food and the stuff we buy, we use in St. Lucia, is imported. We do not control the cost of goods. We control the price. St. Lucia is a free enterprise system. The government only imports a few commodities. In these commodities, the government has removed service charge. The government has subsidized it 
to keep the price down for the products that the government imports. The rest of, of, of the importation is done by the private sector. This government has said that the supermarket business is open for anyone. Anyone who wants to go into the supermarket business, the government, is, the government thinks it's free enterprise, anyone can enter in, in, into this market. There are factors, you just talk, spoke about shipping. There are factors that, that the government, the prime minister, has no control over. What is the solution? What we have control over, we've removed the service charge on all the goods that are in the basket. St. Lucia has the highest number of non vatable and exempt goods in the region. In the region. There is no VAT on electricity. There is no VAT on water. There's no VAT on these two items. Again, in, in, in St. Lucia. We continue to subsidize LPG cooking gas, the 20 pound and the 22 pound cylinder. We continue to subsidize it. We continue to encourage people to, because you remember, um, we encourage people to use locally produced goods. We are enhancing the resources at the Ministry of Agriculture so we can plant more food so we can use it. When the Minister of Finance tries to emphasize the use of local products, his adversaries try to take it as if it's a joke. Instead of looking at the message, they try to attack the messenger. The messenger is temporary. The fact is, even if you attack the messenger, the reality is inflation is ravaging the world. That's the reality. Attacking the messenger doesn't change that, that reality. doesn't change it. Fact is, you can attack the messenger, but when the shipping costs go up, it's going to impact on St. Lucia, even though you attack the messenger. So all we're saying is that the whole phenomenon of inflation is a worldwide. If the Ministry of Finance or if this Prime Minister could have done anything more, and we are continuing to explore what we can do more, we have a discussion with the Chamber of Commerce as to the VAT exempt goods and non vatable goods. We have a discussion with them as to how we can deal with, with that list. We have cushioned the impact of inflation by removing the VAT on building materials. We have cushioned, we've tried to cushion the impact of inflation by removing the VAT on equipment bought by doctors and medical people so the cost of your services can decrease. We continue to subsidize LPG. The government gets its revenue from duties, import duties, etc. This is what runs the country. We've continued to give um, income tax exemptions. We've continued to have amnesty for income tax due all kinds of tax, including VAT. We've increased the threshold from which people pay no tax. We've increased our social support to almost double. We've removed facility fees to ease the strain on people. So the government is cognizant of the fact that the price, that inflation is ravaging the countries, even including St. Lucia. But we hoped that there will be a decrease in shipping costs. Now, because of what is happening, these, that, these shipping costs, it is not sure whether they are going to come down as we thought, because of what is happening now in, 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 in the world, is as far as the world maritime situation is concerned, which we have no control over. So, what we must do as a country is to have a mature discussion on inflation, as we did before, I'm going to instruct the Minister of Commerce to continue that, that discussion. Continue it, because many ideas came out of that, that, that discussion, a mature discussion on inflation, which is our concern, which is the government's concern.
but attacking the messenger will not help. Because in attacking the messenger, no one has come with a viable option as to how you will reduce the impact, further reduce the impact of, of inflation on the people of St. Lucia. Just one question. Arising from the um, consultation, the um, chamber put forward the um, point of you know, establishing trade links with the South. Brazil. Brazil and this. Is that a, um, we are active. We've been actively pursuing that for long, but again, there are psychoscientary things you have to deal with. You know, it's not a, it's not a, I, things are not isolated. You know, it's holistic. Now, in important things, some other parts, you have to deal with the psychoscientary situations. So we should have to ensure that that is, that is done. But we are actively pursuing that. Actively pursuing that. Very good question. That is why, you understand how it's coming together. That's why we're taking the way. That's why we're taking the crews away from Slasper. That's why Slasper bought a new. That is why Slasper bought a new crane. You see, I'm very happy with, with, the, with, the, with the you. With the, I'm very pleased with, with you. Why, who you work for? <laughs> a choice. I, I'm very pleased with the way you an, you are you are analyzing and you analyze. It's very good. That is why. That is why we, Slasper, just bought a new crane so that, so that the processes at Slasper can increase. And it's why we've taken crews away completely from Slasper. Because whereas Slasper only got 10% of its revenue from crews, and they had to put so much, they had a loan of $20 million for, for, for crews. So we said we've taken that away completely from Slasper. So Slasper can concentrate on cargo can concentrate on making the processes there easier. They've just bought a new crane. They're going to be buying some more equipment to make it. So your question is perfect. These are all, these are all parts of the, of the puzzle of the cost of goods in this country. Any more questions? Go ahead. Um, is there any consideration to the call from the president of the National Consumer Association, Dr. She has called for an extension of the ban concession. How do you make that consideration? The, 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 we have a lot of respect for the president of the National Consumer Association, you have a re and then her call is going to, it's being considered. Oh, one more question. There, there are rumors of uh, an alleged shortage of sugar on island. Is there any truth to that? I am, um, or are you in a position to comment? I have not been advised on that. Okay, no. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.